Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Jennifer Corpus. I am a, a developmental and educational psychologist, and um, I've been teaching at Reed for 20 years. I do research on changes in student motivation over time. So I look at the kind of tensions and synergy between more intrinsic and extrinsic forms of motivation. And I also look at feedback systems and how they affect the motiv motivation of both children and adults. Hi, my name is Enriqueta Canseco Gonzalez. I have been for a long time a read. Uh, I'm a, my area of specialty is psycholinguistics, but basically I also have a foot in general in the area of cognitive neuroscience, neuropsychology. And uh, so my research, uh, it's obviously in psycholinguistics, some on uh, language processing in bilinguals, lexical access in bilinguals, but also in the on the neuropsychology side, I've been doing some work on um, cross modal interactions and in synesthesia and other several other topics. OK, so I'm going to give an overview of the department. We're a very empirically based departments. And so and so that means that we use the scientific method to study the behavior of human and non human animals. So our faculty have very diverse interests, and I'll tell you about that in a minute, but we all really use the same common approach. So we all make observations, right? Some of us observe adults, some of us observe children, um, some of us observe non-human animals like rats and pigeons, some of us observe cells and receptors. So there's this really big range in the level of analysis that we use within the department. Um, as a group though, as psychological scientists, we all develop hypotheses, we all develop theories, and then we test those hypotheses. Um, a lot of the testing that we do is laboratory experimentation, but we also test um, things out in field settings, in classrooms. Um, sometimes we partner with social service agencies. A lot of times we use online survey platforms. So we use a variety of methods to answer a variety of questions, but we're all aiming to create generalizable knowledge um, through application of the scientific method. So in the department, um, we do a lot of applied work as well, but I think you're going to hear very little about Freud or Jung or non-scientifically based approaches to psychology within our department. So we're very much grounded in science. Um, in terms of the, the typical path for a student entering um, the psychology department, it almost always starts with our intro course, Psych 101 Foundations in Psychological Science. Many of you may have taken AP Psych. Many of you may have taken Psych at a community college. In almost every case, students still take Psych 101 at Reed, and um, it's because it's such a unique course. In that course, we introduce you to the key concepts across the different areas of psychology, and some of you may have had exposure to those key concepts already. But we also teach the methodologies and approaches that are used to generate that knowledge. So our goal is that you come out of that class with a set of skills and techniques that will allow you to be an investigator of psychological science. So in that Psych 101 course, we have a lecture component. And in that lecture component, that piece is team taught, meaning that all the faculty in the department basically spend about two weeks with you, um, giving an overview of their area of expertise. And then the second part of that Psych 101 class is a series of labs. So each week you have what we call a concept lab and an applied lab. And I actually teach the concept labs in that course this fall. Here we focus on research methods that allow you to actually do psychological science. So you learn how to um, search the literature and focus on studies that have scientific authority. You learn how to operationalize variables. You learn how to design rigorous studies. Um, you also have that paired with what we call an applied lab, which is sort of the hands-on piece where you're actually doing what you're learning about. So for example, during concept lab, um, in one session, you'll learn about um, statistical analyses, how to, how to take your data and manage them quantitatively. We might in the concept lab talk about t-tests and when one would use a t-test and what the different kinds of t-tests are. And then in applied lab, you would actually get onto some statistical software with a data set and do t-tests, okay? So they're paired together really tightly. Um, the applied lab instructor and myself plan those together each week, but it gives you a sort of a conceptual foundation and an opportunity to, to actually do this stuff. The second piece of our intro psych series is typically done in the spring semester of the first year, but it can also be done in the second year. And this is a series of psychological science lab modules. These are intensive mini courses that give you a hands-on opportunity to do psychological science, applying the skills you learned about in Psych 101. And so they, they, they're offered across very different content areas um, and together four of those total one unit or the kind of the equivalent of one class. Those four labs that you would take, you take two in the first half of the semester, let's say in the first quarter, 
and then you switch to other two in the second half of the semester, in the second quarter. So by the end of the semester, you took already those four, uh, if you decide to do that. Not all, but many of our uh, upper division classes require as prerequisite this sequence of intro site, the fall semester and then the spring semester with the four labs. So some of the key highlights there are we have um, eight different what we call core courses, and that's sort of a, a course in each major area, and you need to take four of those to graduate, so there's a variety of options there. Um, upper level students also take a variety of seminar courses that we have. So, for example, I teach a seminar course on motivation and education. I love teaching that. And Riketa teaches a seminar course on neuropsychology. Um, and then we also have a number of 400 level research intensive courses where these also are courses for advanced students um, who've got some core courses under their belt. And here you really go deep in a particular area um, doing research that often is, I think, the kind of the foundation for thesis work that students will ultimately do. Um, students also all are required to take our statistics course. It's called research design and data analysis. Most of take it during sophomore year. And then finally, the capstone is the two unit thesis. There is a huge range of thesis projects in our department. Um, they're nearly all empirical. That is to say that you collect your own original data analyze those data and report on those data. There's a mixture of human and animal projects. So a lot of students working in behavioral neuroscience or comparative psychology will do um, their thesis work with rats or pigeons. In other areas, most often students are using human populations, whether those be adults, whether they be um, adults sort of like who come into the lab, maybe adults who are completing surveys, maybe children. And projects will often grow from ideas students had in our classes. A lot of students also get involved working in the labs of faculty members as sophomores or juniors, and then their thesis work builds on that. And then a number of other students come in and do a project that's not necessarily connected to any of those things, and that's, that's okay too. Within the department, we actually, um, we have 11 required units, and that's out of 30 total units. So that's just saying that basically sort of a third of your coursework would be in psychology, and that's fairly light in terms of major requirements. And because of that, we also have what we call an allied field where students do six units in one of several allied fields. And we have this because we recognize that psychology is really intertwined with many other disciplines. So for example, you could do an allied field in cognitive science and you would do a lot of your coursework outside the department in philosophy, computer science, linguistics, anthropology. And this just really helps you have a more programmatic approach to your courses outside the department. That's really what I want to say about the nuts and bolts of our curricular offerings. But um, we do we also have a very strong community building focus within the department. So like many departments at Reed, we really value close collaborative relationships among students and between students and faculty. Um, so we intentionally try to build that community. In non-pandemic times, we hold a retreat every year. We um, invite up to 30 psych students and all the faculty and we go out into the woods at a retreat center and we talk about psychology in, in all its forms. We play games, we eat delicious food, we do a lot of kind of community building activities. Um, I'm guessing we'll probably resume that retreat in another year. Um, we also have what we call a Griffin Guide program where there's a small team of advanced psych students and a couple of faculty who work together to do community-based programming. So um, this year actually they created a buddy system where they paired interested first and second year students with third and fourth year students in the department so that people would have a, a kind of a person to go to um, with questions about the department. And um, I would say our community building really has taken a different form during the pandemic. For example, um, like in February, they hosted a game night. So they did this psychology related Jeopardy where students, faculty and staff could come together. Um, and then the schedule here, this kind of starts in the fall. So there was like a session with seniors about what to expect about their thesis. We had a reception in September um, for everybody. And we had some kind of community building games to connect students and faculty and staff. And then we had this really fun career panel with psych alumni where we invited four um, alums to come back and just talk about kind of their pathway from read to their jobs. That's the kind of thing we like to do in the department in order to kind of not only educate students about a variety of things, but also build community. And it is true that the psych department has a reputation of being one of the most friendly, and I think it's transpired with these community activities that we organize. It seems that that works, and fa read faculty, psychologists, read faculty are well known as very friendly, receptive, and so it helps us, and it helps, of course, our students to make you feel very welcome and part of, of our group.
within the, the department itself, are there opportunities to focus on like clinical psychology, counseling and therapy and kind of have kind of a focus area like that? I'm so glad this question was asked because we are very empirical, but we also really believe in the application of that empirical work. So while we're not going to talk about Freud and Young, we're going to talk a lot about getting out in the community um, and how our work interfaces with with all kinds of other um, agencies and applied work. So in a several of our classes, students do field placements. So in my developmental psychology class and in the clinical psychology class that's taught, students are out in the community working for several hours a week and then connecting that to their work in the classroom. Um, we also have a very active um, organization or group on campus called SEEDS, which stands for Students for Education, Empowerment, and Direct Service. And we partner with them to place students in variety of agencies. So we're scientifically based, but we really also value those applications. If the student was interested in like a certain class of psychology and it didn't seem to be offered at Reed, but maybe a, a local university was offering that class, is there a way to complete like an independent study or to, to take the, the class there and to, to bring it over to Reed? You absolutely can do that. Um, you work with the registrar's office. The one like, um, I don't know, messiness in it or whatever, is that often the way the units are um, credited at different schools is a little different than the way they work at Reed. So you might take a course elsewhere and at Reed it would transfer into like 0.75 units rather than a full unit. So it's not always a one-to-one -one mapping in terms of the credit that you get, but absolutely many classes at other institutions would be transferable. You just work with the particular department and you can get it approved ahead of time before you actually take the class so that you know that you are going to get credit for it. And then had a question just about the, the classes that you both are teaching this year. And if you wouldn't mind just sharing a little bit more um, about, you know, like any particular classes that, that you're kind of instructing. Right now, this term I'm teaching neuropsychology is one of the courses. I basically it focuses on the study of higher cognitive functions, but from using the evidence obtained from brain damaged individuals and how that can inform theories uh, of the normal cognitive functions uh, back and forth. Um, and the other, my other course uh, this uh, semester is one of these labs, the 200 level labs that focus on psycholinguistics, but I take one topic as the example, and then uh, students are learning to program in a remote testing method called PC IBEX, which I myself learned a year ago. So that's basically my, my second course, uh, which is just the second year that I have taught that class. The one I teach is very different. Um, it's in the area of educational psychology, and I teach students how to use mixed methods approaches. So in my lab, we work on a project looking at children's conceptions of ability um, and children's motivation and their mindset in educational settings. Um, and there are some quantitative data that students learn how to analyze. And then I have a rich set of interviews that have been conducted with children, and students learn learn qualitative analyses. They, they learn how to read those interviews, how to code them, how to extract themes, and then how to relate what comes from that interview data to the quantitative data. And that's a, a method that's growing a lot in certainly in developmental and educational psychology. I mentioned that just to give you a sense like your exposure across these labs is so, so different. These like deep dives into very different areas. One other course I'm teaching right now is this motivation and education seminar I mentioned. Um, it's always fun. It's been so much fun this semester. Um, and the other course I'm teaching right now is a, one of our core courses in developmental psychology. So we go through the lifespan and talk about um, the different change processes that, that happen and some of the theories for why those changes take place. I think it is really just a supportive department and our students go on. And I, I'm, I'm struck because this morning I just had a, a meeting with a student who graduated a few years ago, who's now a grad student at Stanford, and she just won the National Science Foundation three-year graduate research fellowship. Um, and we've had many students win that award, and it's just so gratifying to see our students go on and do these amazing things.